Hey there, students. This is your instructor, Dan, and I wanted to just do a quick interactive uh, screencast here. This will just run 15 minutes, and hopefully it won't cut me off. I'm limited to 15 minutes. But what we wanted to do here was to take you through and um, just review a little bit of what we're going to be doing with our quiz number one. And you guys have a lecture. Um, these are the lecture uh, terms that are not found in your chapter one and chapter two terms. So urbanization, sovereign states, globalization, nationalism, cultural landscapes, which is something I'll talk about in a few minutes, culture regions, those are a couple of important terms for your quiz, and then the idea of diffusion. And of course, then we also have the um, lecture, or uh, excuse me, the chapter terms. So your chapter terms look something like this. Obviously, uh, for a first quiz here, uh, geography is going to be important on your quiz. Place and region, uh, scale, um, something that we look at a lot with maps and uh, how we change the level of detail and the extent that we uh, study things, whether, again, we'll see some good uh, examples of that in a few minutes here. Um, connections, geospatial technologies, you should know what those are. Location, uh, very central to what we do in geography. Uh, again, these are out of the textbook, so uh, plane of the equator, circle of illumination, great circles, don't worry about those. Um, generally understanding what latitude is, the difference between latitude and longitude is helpful. And um, remote sensing, GPS, and GIS, the core geospatial technologies. Okay, a lot of detail over here on this side looking at population. I won't ask you a lot of questions about that, but understanding that we look at population in terms of population density, some of these general measures of population, having a familiarity with those. Um, the demographic transition model, something we talked about a little bit. This idea of the LDCs and the MDCs. Um, so not quite as much from that particular unit for this uh, this first slide. So uh, images of a nation, geographic perspective on the U.S. from air, land, and water. I have just flown across the country, so I wanted to share some images. The Great Basin, perfect example of a, uh, a formal region defined in this case by the physical features of the landscape, this dry, arid landscape. You see these um, river channels that are just draining into these uh, these basins. Uh, this was an interesting thing to spot. In the, I zoomed in here, you see the circle, great solar facility, indicating the hot, clear, dry conditions that are found there. Fires burning in this uh, rather rural uh, part of uh, the state of Nevada. Again, driving, a, flying across the west, we're going to see these um, Kind of uh, landscapes that are uh, less populated, so a lot of interesting physical features that we can see, such as these canyon lands. Uh, the imprint of water in the west. And some of these are not necessarily themes that we'll look for on your quiz, but just some interesting things that I observed out the window of the aircraft the other day. Okay, again, the Rockies uh, would be described as a region or a formal region. Again, we're looking at things at quite a coarse uh, level, coarse scale. Really quite interesting views out the window of an aircraft. We'll look forward to having some similar experiences on our trip to South Africa. And now we start to get into some of the more human landscapes. We can see these um, imprints, obviously resource extraction, uh, some of the things that humans depend on on the landscape, um, cultural landscapes, ways that humans occupy the landscape, in this case uh, housing subdivisions uh, in Illinois. We're going to be approaching uh, Chicago here, and we can see a very different landscape pattern here with these 
dispersed farm uh, square grid that transitions into these uh, housing developments. And of course, uh, this idea of connections, um, humans use uh, interstates and other highway systems, uh, obviously for moving people and goods and services. Interesting patterns of these housing tracks in the suburbs. Um, urban landscapes, these complex urban landscapes uh, epitomized here by uh, so much going on. Residential in the lower right hand corner, these big warehouse operations, a massive uh, rail distribution center, and then finally, uh, see a racetrack up at the top. And, uh, and then we get into the heart of this, uh, this great city of uh, Chicago. Human impacts on the land seen uh, as these natural native woodlands are giving way to uh, housing developments. This idea of carrying capacity, the author talks about the fact that humans are starting to outstrip nature's ability to be able to uh, support um, the population. Okay, population density, this idea that you have generally measured in terms of people per square mile. Okay, that would be considered an arithmetic density. And of course, in a more developed country like the United States, we're going to have highly developed systems of infrastructure such as uh, airports. Here is Chicago's O'Hare International. We get a perspective on the amount of energy that's being used in places like the United States when we uh, take the broad scale view from, uh, from the air. And uh, again, traveling into our cities, another great city, um, the industrial city of Pittsburgh, uh, the Monongahela, the Allegheny meet to form the Ohio River, making up the three rivers. We get a reminder of this uh, industrial past of uh, Pittsburgh, Steel Town. This is where the U.S. Industrial Revolution took place. And uh, we see this uh, rebirth of the city in the Pit Pittsburgh Central Business District. Very cosmopolitan and uh, successful city is, uh, is Pittsburgh today. So we see uh, this rail system, remnants from the industrial era. Again, we can see these uh, lots of indications of what was here before and also things that have uh, changed. So Pittsburgh's Cut Flower Company has now found uh, where the steel mills used to reside decades ago. As you may have gathered, we're crossing the um, state of Pennsylvania by rail here. So this is the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, in this case the Allegheny Mountains, where coal was mined to feed the Industrial Revolution. And again, we get this sense of these, uh, these cultural landscapes that have developed um, this evolution of transportation systems in a highly industrialized country like the United States, state capital of Harrisburg, America's original transportation miracle was the railroad. And now we transition to a busy Brooklyn weekday, Brooklyn, New York, that is. You see the sign advertising, uh, create something. And uh, you can see uh, uh, gentrification, we'll talk about in a moment here, but you can see the African-American hairdresser uh, business in the middle here, um, this neighborhood we're staying in, still seems to be about 50% uh, African-American, uh, but is uh, changing rapidly through a process known as gentrification. And uh, again, I talked about the fact that we're in this transition stage of urbanization around the world. Every place is increasingly urbanizing. 
and of course New York is uh, the great urban center of the United States and we see money leading to the development of um, formerly low-income and working-class neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, one man yesterday was uh, commenting on the fact that uh, not too long ago you could get a two-bedroom place in Brooklyn for $1,000, and now you pay $2,000 for a studio. Central Park, uh, this is Strawberry Fields, dedicated to, uh, to John Lennon, who lived and died not too far from this very spot. And of course, the great uh, Central Park. Washington Square Park, famous for uh, the folk revolution of the mid-1960s, so lots of uh, musicians and others that are out as well as just citizens of the community and tourists alike. Of course, this great city depends on moving uh, people through uh, rush hour during the uh, on the subway tends to be quite crowded and uh, busy, very difficult uh, to move nine million people around in a city, but New York manages to do so. And a view of the Big Apple from across the East River in Brooklyn. All right, so in the few minutes that we have left, I'm going to transition back to uh, talking a little bit more about our um, some of our terms. Um, again, these are um, just going to highlight a few things. You know, we talked about um, I described arithmetic density uh, as, as people per square mile. We can also look at uh, agricultural or physiologic density. Um, and these are essential basic measures of population, crude birth rate, crude death rate. Those are births and deaths per thousand in the population, uh, doubling time of the population, um, fertility rate and mortality rate and life expectancy. Uh, when you're thinking about those things, try to relate them to this idea of less developed countries and more developed countries, obviously South Africa, is going to fit into the LDC category. The United States and much of Europe would be considered MDCs. Um, and talked about some of the population changes. When you do be familiar with the demographic transition model, just this basic idea of how population changes through time and uh, the role that the agrarian, industrial, and medical revolutions played in the past in um, developing uh, population, seeing population growth advance. Okay, so again, we did talk a little bit about um, latitude and longitude. I'm just going to use um, Google Maps to illustrate this. Um, I'm, I'm sitting in Brooklyn, New York, as I write this, so I'm zoomed in on New York. And this is an example of scale. Okay, so I'm uh, changing the scale of the map. We see the level of detail of the map that changes. And then we can also get an idea about um, location. So we could look at uh, New York in terms of its relative location. We can see that it's to the east of Pennsylvania, to the south of Massachusetts, to the north of Washington, D.C., for example, that would describe its relative location. Or we could describe it in terms of its absolute location at 40 degrees, 40.69 degrees north latitude, and 74 degrees east longitude, ne negative indicating east. Now, interestingly enough, if you were to look at Reading, where you guys are sitting, and we were to look at the location, we would see that Reading sits at 40 degrees north, 122 degrees west, longitude. 